David had just c completed Eraserhead when I met him. And I met him because there was a young man working for Mel Brooks uh, when I started working for Mel as his AD, and that was Stuart Kornfeld, who is now producer for Ben Stiller. He just mentioned David Lynch. He said, hey, you know, this guy, David Lynch. And I wanted to meet him. I mean, he sounded very interesting. So I called him, and he and I met at Bob's Big Boy in Santa Monica. Santa Monica Boulevard, there's Bob's Big Boy. And David said, I like going to Bob's. I always go to Bob's. So I said, okay, I'll meet you at Bob's. So we go to meet at Bob's, and I had no intention absolutely no intention of offering him Elephant Man or even thinking about him now as a director. Had seen Eraserhead at that point? Or? I had seen Eraserhead, but I had not, uh, I, I definitely had no thought that the guy who did Eraserhead is the guy who's going to do my movie. Absolutely not. I was looking at Alan Pakula. I was looking at names of big names. I figured Mel could get me to anybody. I'm going to look at the top people out there and find somebody great. A few days later, we met. And when we met the next time, he said, I love that script. I love it. He says, I see it. I know what I know. I, I really think I know how to make it. And he started to talk to me about it. And he said, this is, you know, I love the deformity of the guy and the thing. And it's interesting. And the things he said about were very, very smart and interesting. And the music he was hearing and the, this. And, I mean, it was all stuff that I said, oh, that's great. No one, no one had talked to me about the movie at that in, in that level. And he said, look, I know you, you, you've seen Eraserhead. I'd like you to show you some of my other work. I said, what other work? He says, well, I did a film before Eraserhead called The Grandmother. Well, what was so interesting about The Grandmother was that it was, it was as, every bit as bizarre as, as uh, Eraserhead, and there's no dialogue in it. There's a, a little boy and his parents and they bark at each other like dogs. They sit at a table, they eat. His parents are upset with him because he wets his bed. It's in black and white. So you see this bed and you see a stain in the, in the middle of the bed. And he's embarrassed and uncomfortable and his parents are always barking at him. So he goes out and there's no other character. So he, he somehow takes a couple of seeds and he puts them on the wet spot in his bed. And lo and behold, a tree grows out of this bed. And it's a f huge tree. I mean, you know, and he did this all with paper and machine. I don't know how he built it, but it was a whole tree that came out of the bed. And then the tree falls over and there's a rocking chair in his room. And he, he in the roots of the tree, there's an old woman. And he pulls, he births the woman out of the tree and puts her in the chair and sits in her lap, and, and she is his grandmother. Well, I looked at that and I saw a very moving piece of, of work. And what it also told me was that the eraser head was not a one shot. It was part of a continuum of thinking. He wasn't just some, some you know, smart uh, film school student who made, a, made a, a crazy little film that got him some attention. No, it wasn't that. He, had, he really had a, a, a vision. He had an idea. And, and uh, the, the grandmother was on the way towards the bigger vision, which was, uh, a, you know, a racer head. I, I endorsed him. And Mel, whose assistant was Stuart Kornfeld, also liked David. So Mel said, okay, boy, you guys really like this guy. You, you think he's the guy. So, you know, at that point, I, you know, after he had read the thing, I said, you know, what do I got to lose? I don't know anybody. I, I don't have anybody else. Um, let's, you know, let's go down this journey together. Let me see if this works. So Mel, again, being rather astute and interesting, said, okay, but I got to see his film. I got to see Eraserhead. So I said, okay. So we set a screening and Stuart wasn't around. He, and David said, I, I'm not coming. I'm not coming to the screening. I said, he said, I'll send you the print, but I'm, I don't want to be there. So I said, okay. So I set a screening at 20th Century Fox. They have a screening room. Mel can always get in. After lunch, we go to lunch, come back. 
the movie's there, empty screening room, me, Mel. Mel is sitting two rows behind me, I'm sitting there. And I remember, I've seen Eraserhead already once. So I'm watching the movie and it seems to me like the slowest movie in the history of film. I, I can't even believe that I decided to let him see it. I mean, I'm embarrassed. I, I don't know what he's gonna do. Mel, I'm it's thinking, not a very conventional movie. it is so not a conventional movie and, he had, and I gave him no sense of what to expect. All through the movie, I am sweating and I'm thinking, at the end of this, Mel is gonna think I'm a nut and he's gonna tell me we gotta get somebody else and I'm not even sure about you anymore. You know, that, that was my, what was going through my head. Movie ends, dead silence, and I'm thinking, okay, here it comes. And I'm waiting for him to, Mel being the kind of physical, he, I thought he was gonna whack me in the back of the head or something. And I'm sitting around and I turn around and I see him and he's shaking his head. And he says, I get it, I get it. And I said, what? He says, it's an adolescent's nightmare of responsibility. You know, it's an adolescent that is going to have a child and is afraid and, you know, and that was his take on the movie. Didn't mean it was right or wrong, but it just meant that he got it. He got something very profound from the screening. And he says, okay, I like this guy. I think he's really interesting and unusual. Let's meet him. Okay. I call up David. David, uh, David agrees to come in, a little nervous wearing a little bomber jacket and his, his shirt buttoned up to the top and a pocket protector with some pens in it and a pair of khaki pants and sneakers. And that's David's dress almost every day I've ever met him. That was, you know, in those days, that's all he ever wore, wore the same thing. It wasn't one thing. I mean, he apparently had 25 pairs of pants, and, but that's what he wore all the time, same thing. So Mel meets him and says, I liked your movie, and talks to David, and David is very open and very, David has a kind of a Midwestern twang to him. He's, he's, he's from Montana, Missoula, Montana is where he grew up before he moved to Washington, D.C. We're talking about it, everything. And Mel says, okay, we're going to go with you. We're going we're gonna to let you direct this, which I could not have been able to make happen without Mel's uh, endorsement. And so that by the time Mel and I were going to the studios alone to sell the project, they'd say, who was directing? We said, we got this guy named David Lynch. And Mel would say, yeah, he's, he's a bit of a genius. And, th and, that, and, and they had to either believe him or not, but that was the story.